Hi guys, welcome to another extra talk. We have a lot to discuss today. Uh, the guests today are, uh, of course, Sahbi. Welcome, man. What up, Ajax? Hi, man. And welcome back, uh, Jelan, for the for several time now on our channel. Glad to have you back again. Thanks, Ajax. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, a lot about uh, uh, the topic, the Champions League. We've had an amazing run there, and uh, we have uh, a lot to discuss uh, considering, uh, uh, yeah, this. Uh, this tournament. So uh, let's take it away. Uh, I will start with uh, with Sahbi. Sahbi, um, what do you think of of the team's performance in in the last game against uh, Dortmund? Well, um, I was uh, by the way in that during that game talk uh, uh, when uh, when we played that match, and yeah, as I said, first I was poor. Uh, we could not hold the ball for so long. Uh, Dortmund created an extra player on midfield, which which made it very difficult for us because we could not cope with that. Uh, especially at the beginning, um, yeah. The way the way uh, to Anthony was basically blocked because he's yeah he's our most dangerous player at this moment, and they blocked him. So uh, uh, so tactical wise, uh, they they Dortmund did, did well in the first half, and Ajax did on the other hand very well in the second half. Uh, but it didn't have to do with 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 especially with what Ten Hag uh, did, but mainly what. Dortmund, the Dortmund trainer did because he subbed one of their best players, uh, uh, Torgan Hazard. And by subbing Hazard, they basically gave the whole left side. The whole left side was open again for, for, for Anthony. And that, made, uh, and that made Anthony, of course, uh, be one of the best players in the second half and, uh, uh, and, and got his wings back by, by saying so. And uh, yeah, w- which led to three assists. So yeah, we, the second half, we were great, but... It also had to do with uh, Dortmund not, not, not tactical wise not uh, performing well. Yeah, and, and the red card, of course, that, that doesn't work yeah, also. No, exactly. Because but the, what fate, I... the, the fatigue kicks in, and especially when that left back got substituted, who, who was probably tired of chasing Anthony the whole time, then you saw oh. the, the drop in level also on that side with the, with the, with the left back coming in. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, they, uh, if I were the, the Dortmund trainer, I would have subbed their striker and played more uh, defensively, especially. Uh, trying to attack in transition uh, because they have very creative attacking midfielders with Brandt and with uh, Royce, and their wing backs could c- could attack as well. And in that way, Anthony would have been uh, stopped probably, uh, at least for for the time being. But uh, luckily for us, uh, yeah, they had uh, a poor trainer at that moment. Yeah, yeah, and we got the three points, so that's perfect, of course, because uh, it, it made uh, qualification for the for the knockout stage. Exactly. Uh, what about you, uh, Jelan? How did you uh, evaluate that game? Yeah, I think it was um, Dortmund got a little bit of the upper hand up until the the red card, which I think was very harsh, um, or you could say good acting by uh, by Anthony. Uh, I don't like that kind of stuff, but sometimes you have to be a little bit smart in these kind of matches. Um, it was a dangerous tackle, though, but didn't really hit him. Um, and I think they were very mature after they got 1-0 down by a also very harsh and easy given penalty. Um, they kept their head up and uh, I think they were very mature in the second half. I think Blint was phenomenal in transition. Uh, I think at least the second and maybe the first goal as well was uh, from a cross pass with him. And he did that a couple of times more where he like uh, sped up the play. Um, and you saw it with the third goal as well. There was a phenomenal pass by uh, by Blin. So he sees the the space yeah. and he gives the pass. So I think that um, all in all was a very good and mature match. And because the ball tempo was that quick, they just couldn't keep up anymore in the second half, which is uh, which is good. So I was happy with the performance. Yeah, the, the, the perfect uh, because we were uh, 12 points out of four matches. So uh, statistic yeah. wise, it could have been uh, not better than that. Uh, I want to go a little bit deeper into the topic because, um, yeah, that, this was only one game. But how do you rate the, the team's performance so far in the Champions League during the whole season? So uh, the four matches we played. Uh, take it away, Jelan. Um, yeah, I think as you stated, it couldn't be more perfect also in terms of scoring. I think the first match against Benfica was already like insane. The four goals from Haller. Uh, we haven't seen him at clinical yet. And uh, apart from that match, he was, wasn't that clinical uh, after that. Uh, very mature match against Besiktas. Uh, you could have easily like dropped or lost points there because they were like very fired up. And um, then we had obviously the, I think the best match of Ajax 
at least since Real Madrid out in, uh, I think it was 2019, uh, the away match against Real Madrid. Uh, I think that was the best Ajax I've seen at least since then, and maybe it was even better than than then. Um, and then again against Dortmund, I didn't really expect much more than a draw, um, but I think we were pretty uh, lucky with the red card and uh, otherwise maybe uh, we could have settled for a draw, uh, but all in all, 12 points out of four. We get 14 uh, goals in front and one two. seed. Or two, two, so, two, the penalty two. and and the blunder from uh, from Pasquier yeah, so before, so before he went uh, into super <laughs> modus. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> or something. Yeah, but also, uh, yeah, Pasquier has uh, like stepped up his game. So I didn't think he would would have been like good enough, uh, but he stepped up his game. So good for him. Uh, that's, I think it's quite a nice analysis, uh, Sahbi. Do you have something to add to this? Because I think you no. have your own opinion also. No, I mean Yelon uh, explained it perfectly. Uh, I mean our run was is, is so great. Uh, I mean, it's the first time that Ajax won four times in a row eh, in the Champions League. And that's, that's phenomenal. Uh, everybody's playing well. Our attack, we scored so many goals. Yeah. And we conceded only two, of which uh, 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 one is a penalty, a harsh penalty, and the other one is a blunder from, uh, uh, from Pasvir, an error from Pasvir. So, yeah, I mean, our defense is so great at this moment. And our attack, uh, especially from the right side, uh, yeah, we... It was phenomenal all through the through the four games, and I mean, as many clubs are saying, it's so difficult uh, for teams to play against us. Nobody would like to play against us because we are we have a lot of movement in our in, in our play, and and so difficult for for opponents to defend that. And uh, yeah, terrific, terrific run uh, at this moment, and uh, couldn't be happier. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you both because uh, it, it's been something special, especially uh, even the team in 94-95 uh, didn't uh, win the first four matches. Yeah. So this is, is quite something else. So um, very proud uh, indeed. Um, I, wa I want to go a little bit deeper into the, into the team. Um, we've played uh, magnificent in Europe uh, this season, like you both said. But what makes this team so special in Europe this season? What is the, what is the secret? What is the key to the success? Sahbi, take it away. Well, if you compare it with uh, with last season, um, yeah, the team is basically the same, uh, and, and not one of the important players left, uh, if I could say so. Um, so we, we we've matured way more, and we're we're more used to our our, our way of play, uh, our base, our style of play. Uh, next to that, we got Berghaz, um, who became a real addition, a real asset for our team, um, especially since he started to play as a number 10, because as a right winger, I wasn't really convinced, especially since uh, Anthony uh, came in. But as a 10, yeah, he's playing phenomenal. I would definitely keep him as a number 10. And because of him playing as number 10, we can, we, we can play differently. Yeah? Uh, I mean, if you, if you want a, a number 10 that, can, that, that goes deep, we got class. If you want a 10 that's more uh, giving the assist or trying to be everywhere, we got Berghaz. So we have different styles that we could play this season. And, and next to that, our, sport, our squad is just very broad. And quality-wise, uh, yeah, I mean, we could, we could easily substitute one player and uh, uh, get in another player who, yeah, who doesn't even concede a lot, uh, in which we don't, don't even have to concede a lot of quality. Uh, we have so many players in form. I mean, we saw Noose and Anthony, the tandem. A terrific Haller with goals. He was uh, he was a top scorer uh, in the Netherlands, but also uh, during Champions League uh, before the last game. Uh, Berghuis and Thadis with their assists. So yeah, I mean, every the puzzle is it, it, it's like all the pieces are are, are there, and, and and yeah, it's difficult for opponents to uh, yeah to, to to stop us at this moment. Yeah, that's definitely true, and uh, I think I think it's uh, something special going on uh, within this team again. Uh, how about you, Jelan? What is uh, what is your thoughts about the key to to the success this season? Yeah, I think um, analysis is good, but I think you're missing one key point: is that in the Champions League, we're facing teams that actually want to play football. Uh, they want to have their peop uh, their players a lot more uh, up on the pitch, and if we play in the league, we play at teams that park the bus. Um, so Ajax is thriving against teams who leave uh, room between 
the different uh, lines between the defense and the midfield. And that's where Berghaus comes in, where he shines. And that's where Anthony comes in. Um, so we get a lot of room to play. And we see that within this space, um, we're able to like play this tiki taka football, which is not uh, out of it's out of this world sometimes. And you see, even the top European teams uh, aren't able to follow. Uh, but they also see these kind of matches. So I think from here on out, they're going to find a solution to this moving parts and this playing uh, between the lines. So um, yeah. we're, we're very good, but yeah. we also get more opportunity to play like that than we do in the league. So yeah. I think that's the key to the success, yeah. apart from all the yeah. players that are in form. Yeah. So, well, I, I'm co of course, I've compared this team uh, uh, with the, the team of last year. And the yep. previous year, I didn't take the Eredivisie into account because normally, normally, yeah, all the teams in the Champions League try to attack because they're yep. all champions or, or or second or third in their in their league. So normally they would be able to attack. So that's why I didn't take that into account. But yeah, you're yep. correct uh, when we yep. take the Eredivisie into account. Yeah. But if, if you look at last year, uh, teams were like defending a lot more against Ajax. It also depends on the draw. We now have teams that want to play football. Benfica wants to play football. Dortmund wants to play football. Even Besiktas was sporting. Up the pitch sporting. Sporting. Uh, sporting. Sorry, sporting. Yeah. 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 yeah no, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have a valid point, uh, Jelan, about um, having more room in the Champions League and can play more between the lines. And this is something that suits the, the gameplay of Ajax. But I, I have one question, though, uh, Jelan. Uh, do you think the big teams? You know the, the the giant teams in Europe with a, with a lot of money will actually alter their game plan if they face Ajax. Do you think they 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 value Ajax that high that they will alter their normal tactics so that they cannot play their own game? Um, a four 0 against uh, Dortmund at home and a one three away at Dortmund at home that is something to like. That everybody, every team sees that, so they're gonna have to do something about this. So, if you are like a Mourinho, the Mourinho's of this world, or the Ancelotti's of this world, they're gonna adapt a little bit. Maybe not all in all, but they're gonna adapt a little bit. They have to because they, if they go all out like Real Madrid did in 2019, they're gonna lose. So they have to do something about that. So I think yes. Okay, yeah, because because Guardiola and, and, and like Bayern Munich, uh, that yeah. sort of teams, I cannot see them like Different altering their game team. because they're 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 so good themselves. They're so, even better well, at the tiki taka, yeah. arguably, than Ajax. So those uh, those are not the teams that we want to have in the draw. Uh, but other teams like I don't know Roma or uh, whatever, like Mourinho's teams, like they're gonna do that. I, I think they will change their tactics when they play away. So when they play in the in the Young Craft Arena. But at home, these type of uh, teams like the Bayern Munich or the, the, the cities, etc., they will try to play with, uh, with, with their own philosophy at home. But I do think, especially a type of Guardiola, he can mix players, putting uh, like a defender as a right winger, for example, uh, slowly to, to change uh, things. So, yeah, perhaps a way they could, they could, they could do this because Ajax is, of course, uh, phenomenal. And uh, yeah, at their home turf, yeah, they will probably play their own uh, game. You, you touched upon it briefly. Uh, you said the Johan Cruyff uh, Arena, our stadium. Uh, I must say, and I want I want to highlight that uh, it, it it I enjoyed very much to see the crowd again in the stadium and the ambience wow. uh, during the matches. It's really something else, and it's it's so amazing to see how many noise we make and 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 how much we cheer the team on and. I think no no team in Europe wants to to play uh, at the Johan Cruyff Arena at the moment yeah. because it's really something else. Well, Ajax, I don't think it's only Johan Cruyff Arena. Eh? I mean, yeah. at Dortmund, yes, I, we saw it on the television. We only heard the Ajax fans. Yeah, eh? yeah. We, we we didn't even hear the Dortmund fans. So I think our fans uh, are the best. The best are, are one of the best. <laughs> I mean, in a way, uh, in a way, games you could you can hear them from miles away. Yeah, really great, man. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, to to yeah notice that uh, within within the yeah. within this talk. Uh, also, um, yeah, I want I want to ask you guys your opinion about uh, the following uh, the following topic because we've had an amazing run uh, a few years ago with Frankie in the Licht and reached the semifinals. Let's not talk about how it ended because <laughs> it's still sore <laughs> and sour after all these years. But um, I want to ask you guys uh, uh, your honest opinion. Uh, this team this season. 
how do you compare it and to, uh, to the team in 18-19 that had a great Champions League run? Um, but take it away, Sahbi. Who do you value higher? And uh, give us your opinion, please. Well, I see the two, I, I take it twofold. If I look at the starting lineup, uh, if I look at the starting lineup, I think the team of 18-19 is quality-wise uh, better. Uh, because we had simply we had simply players out of this world. We had uh, Matthijs de Ligt, Frankie de Jong, uh, Hakim, who was in great form, uh, Donny in, in superb form. Uh, so if I look at the starting 11, I would say that the 18-19 the team was quality-wise better. But if I look at the squad in general, yeah, I think it, uh, the squad of this year is, uh, in my opinion, uh, a lot better. Uh, we have a way broader squad uh, with a lot of quality, uh, quality and talent on the bench as well, meaning that we can potentially substitute a player and that player can easily take over the role of uh, the starter uh, without decreasing a lot in quality. If I compare it with, uh, with the 18-19 squad, where we substitute, uh, where, for example, Sinkrafo uh, 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 was, uh, was getting in, yeah, I think the quality... If you compare it with the with the players here, like Nico coming in instead of Daly, yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge difference, huge gap. So I think quality-wise, we we are definitely uh, uh, way better uh, if you look at the squad. Yeah, because uh, Ten Hag also briefly touched upon this uh, topic uh, recently in the media. He said that 18-19 team was more unpredictable. They could reach like crazy heights, but also have low, uh, big lows, you know, and he yeah. uh, said this team, the, the current team is more stable. It's more mature. It's more uh, mature. Is that something you value as, as something good or, or do you think um, this is negative because it doesn't fluctuate that much? Uh, well, no, no, I think it's very good, especially uh, in the Champions League. I mean, one big error, if you decrease a lot in level, it could be all over. Eh? Well, at this moment, we play at a constant level and even at a high level, but never below par. And I think that's the key to success, uh, especially in the Champions League. You can't aff afford any bad result due to a bad game. And at this moment, we play great. And hopefully we can continue to play great. Uh, we have a huge squad, meaning that if a Gravenberg gets injured, we have Kudus who can easily... Uh, uh, get in. Well, if you compare it with the 18-19 squad, there weren't a lot of quality players that could uh, get in. And that way, the level would decrease instantly. So I think the squad, the, 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 the quality of the squad is, is key. Before we go to Jelan, because I'm very curious what your opinion is, uh, just briefly. So you value the 18-19 squad higher quality-wise than our current squad? No, the starting lineup. Yeah, higher. But, but the squad itself, like the, the, the 23 players, uh, definitely the... Okay, let me, let, let me narrow the question for you. If the squad of 18-19, if it would be possible, played against, against the first 11 we have now? I will play the 18-19. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, okay, thanks. Jelan, what about you? Yeah, I agree with some parts. Um, I think... Quality-wise, there were a lot of good players, um, and I also agree that if they have an off day, there would have been like no uh, no baseline. They would like fall through their baseline. Uh, but I also have the same thing with this team. Um, I think that some players can be very stable uh, and always like perform not at a ten or at a nine, but like a seven. And I'm talking about a alpha rest, for instance. He is never a 10, but he's like always a seven or a seven and a half. Uh, but you really want those players who can be a 10, like Anthony. Uh, but that means they can also be a six sometimes. Um, so I don't agree with that this team is necessarily more constant, but we have a broader, broader uh, team. We have more than 11 uh, first line of players, is what Ten Hag always says. Uh, and I agree with that. Um, but I don't always agree with the. Uh, who he puts in uh, to the team. So I think we can make a lot more uh, room there. Um, and sometimes even substitute, I've saw the, uh, I talked about it in the previous talk, uh, substitute players like Gravenberg, which he did now actually. Uh, yeah. this week. 
Um, so I don't necessarily agree with that this team is more constant. Um, they have been so far, but I don't think that they are necessarily more stable. So which team would you choose as best? Ooh, I like player? I like the magic moments of players that can be easily have a four of a game and then have a magic moment and then be, be like a 10. So I choose the 18-19 team just because of players like Siach and De Jong who like have moments of brilliance. Yeah. Okay, just Definitely. something popped uh, into my mind uh, right now. Uh, I want to hear briefly from you. We start with you, Jelan. How do you actually value... Uh, Erik ten Hag from 18-19 and his progression he made until uh, we, we're at this season, you know, the, the 2021 season or the 21-22 season. Uh, do you see uh, progression in his uh, coaching style? Uh, I, I want your opinion on how you value this. Um, I think so. It's a little bit hard to judge. I think he was carried by a lot of players in the 18-19 season because um, they got him out of uh, some very, very big problems uh, every now and then. And I think now he has more of an influence on the team uh, with his style of play because he actually made players who were unable to adjust to the Ajax play style, play the Ajax play style. So I definitely see his hand in players like Alvarez or um, uh, Martinez and stuff. Um, so I definitely see his hand. So he must be doing something right because they gel to the team very good at the moment. I still have uh, some issues with his presence uh, in the way he describes things. Uh, but if that's the biggest problem we have with the trainer, I'll take it. Um, so I do think that he's a very good trainer, uh, but I'm not so sure if he's a very good manager. But all in all, I see progression, yes. What about you, uh, Sahdi? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, if you look at the 1819 uh, uh, era, he didn't have a plan B at all. Uh, and, that, and that's something that uh, uh, that was miss that was missing for sure. Nowadays, he's, it's still missing. Uh, but at that time, he made some substitutions, which, yeah, we which we couldn't or nobody could understand. And I think he pr definitely progressed uh, on, the, on on this side. But we need to take into account, of course, with regards to substitutions in the 1819 uh, year. It was not allowed to have more than three substitutions. Now he has the capability, the option to substitute a, a bit more. And uh, yeah, I agree uh, as well with uh, with Jelan. He he made players better and made them understand the Ajax type of play. If you look at Alvarez, a huge difference between his first year and his second year. Um, Martinez, at first, he he was playing in midfield. And when he was dropped from that midfield, everybody was like, what are you doing? It's unthinkable, etc." But at the end, as centre-back, he excelled more, if, if I may say so. So I think he, he, sees, he, sees, he sees things. And as a, as, a, as a coach, yeah, he definitely progressed uh, from, that, uh, from that aspect. So yeah, definitely he, uh, yeah, he did uh, well. I do want to add something about this part because I think uh, some has to do also with him playing in, in another position than he plays now at the beginning. Also with his wife not being in, uh, in, in, in Holland and, and uh, with his little child that was very young back then. Yeah. These things also do not help. But also he was played a lot as a center uh, back and, and on a different position than we play him now. We and shouldn't do that ever. No. And I think this is also something that the coach did, you know. So, uh, yes, he makes him play better and he uh, let him gel into the squad more. Yeah. But also he sees his value now on the position where he's at his best, if you if you ask me. So, yeah, um, so yeah, yeah that's, that's something to do with it. But uh, I agree with you both. Um, I want uh, something um, from you both. I want to hear which team you want to face in the knockout stage. So I've sent you uh, both a, a list prior to this talk. And I uh, added to that list uh, all the current number twos in the pool, um, excluding our current pool, of course, because you cannot face your own pool in the first knockout stage. Um, and the other teams, a separate list who could also end up at the second place. Um, please give me uh, your two favorite uh, picks from, from this list and your two uh, least favorite ones that you will not face into the next round. And let's start with you, Jelan. Um, I think we have to agree that Lille would probably be the best uh, choice. After that, 
I'm not really sure. Maybe Barcelona, they're not playing very great. So I would, it's weird to say, but I would choose those. Um, least favorite would probably be Paris Saint-Germain, even though they're not playing great as well, but they have a lot of quality, especially up front. And I think Chelsea is a very well-balanced team. Um, so that those are my least two favorites. But uh, other than that, the other teams, I think we would at least have a chance uh, against those. Okay, and what about you, uh, Sophie? Yeah, it's like Jelan read my mind. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, as a, I mean, he, he said it perfectly. Uh, Barcelona is a team that, yeah, is practically uh, almost dead. Um, and, and defensively, they, they are very poor. So that's where their weakness is. And that's where, and, and, and that's where our, our, our the, uh, yeah, strength is. And with regards to Lille, yeah, we saw it in the previous seasons. Uh, I think we can uh, really uh, uh, have that opponent. So yeah, it's, a, it's an easy, easy choice. And yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, the opponents which I rather avoid is, uh, yeah, even though Paris Saint-Germain is, as Yelan said, uh, it, it, it's not there yet where they, sh where they should be, but yeah, they could, they, they could easily have their mo magic moments with Neymar, with Mbappe, with, uh, uh, with Messi. So yeah, you'd like to avoid that uh, as well. And Chelsea, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like, I, I, I'm, I, I, I would like Ajax to avoid any team that plays uh, with a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3 formation because that formation is really killing for Ajax. At this moment, we can't cope with that formation. And hopefully uh, Ten Hag uh, sees a, a solution for this because, yeah, it's, it's terrible. Against Atalanta, we, were, uh, we had difficulties. Dortmund first half when they played like this, we had difficulties. Um, so, yeah, in that, from that perspective, yeah, I would avoid Chelsea, Inter, uh, those type of uh, clubs as well. Great. Okay, guys, thank you so much for, uh, for all your input. I want to uh, give a last message from, uh, from the We Talk team. Um, so uh, I, will, uh, I will talk now. Um, I want to say that uh, we, on behalf of the We Talk uh, Ajax crew, are very happy to hear that, uh, that Ajax and the uh, Abdul Haknuri family uh, reached an agreement um, with what, ha what has been dragging on for a long time for compensation. This is uh, a very um, yeah, difficult situation and yeah, everybody loves Nuri and, and, and wishing him the best, you know, and we are very glad to hear that uh, the finally there is a settlement and it uh, doesn't go to court and hopefully uh, we can let it all rest now and I hope this, this amount of money will help the Nuri family and, um, and also Abdul Haq, of course. And uh, on behalf of the We Talk uh, Ix, well, we want to say uh, stay strong, Api, and uh, you're strong. always in our minds.